Hello everyone, my name is Print Tanker Rains Gailitis and this is how I made the vortex engraving. I started working on this project during the winter and there was a lot of snow this year. It will come into play a little bit later in the video. The idea for this print partially came from my wife, who suggested that I should engrave a flower, as all my latest engravings have been uh, more or less space related. For me, every project usually contains two ideas. Firstly, the visual idea, depicting the chrysanthemum and the cyclone, examining the common vortex pattern between both. Secondly, the technical idea, printing the cyclone simultaneously in intaglio and relief print. I will explain both of the processes a little bit later in the video when we get to the printing part. And in perfect scenario, both ideas complement one another, in this case, how the cyclone forms and how it is printed. Now to the preparation of the plate. As the copper plate is quite smooth, you cannot properly draw on it with traditional media like pencil, charcoal, etc. Nowadays a marker might be used or a laser printed image could be transferred onto the plate with solvent. However, the traditional way of beeswax transfer is my preferred one. The plate is heated and a thin film of wax is evenly melted over it. It just feels right to me not to mention the beautiful smell of honey that fills the air when I do it. Afterwards, the plate is left to cool. The cold press bed works perfectly for it. I love sitting down and watching how the wax crystallizes. There is just something mesmerizing about it. Now that the wax has dried, we can transfer the sketch onto the plate. The pencil sketch is laid flat, face down. With the help of a burnisher or a spoon, the back side of the paper is rubbed. By doing so, the pencil particles from the sketch get trapped in the wax. Now we can start the engraving process. Well, not quite. The trapped graphite particles in the wax have not left a permanent mark on the plate. It can smudge, it can rub off, plus the wax would make it difficult to see what we have engraved. So, all the lines have to be retraced with a dry point or scribe. This would leave permanent scratch marks in the plate. Now that every line has been retraced, the wax can be washed off. There's several ways how it can be done. One is by using a solvent, like turpentine. But as for this print, the plate is quite large. I ended up reheating it and wiping it off like that. Finally, engraving can start. And this is my favorite part of making a new piece. It is slow, laborious, but at the same time, it is very meditative and relaxing. The lines are engraved by the use of burin. The name of the tool comes from the metal chip that is being lifted out of the plate, burr. I guess I forgot to mention it, but to print correctly, everything has to be engraved mirrored, including the handwritten text which uh, sometimes is quite difficult. I was making steady progress on the engraving, but then remember the big snowfall at the start of the video? It started melting <laughs> as I live on the upper floor and the water was not draining properly from the roof. It started leaking through the ceiling of my studio. The work had to be halted and the room emptied I could not proceed with printing the plate. The issue was fixed in a couple of weeks. I could move back into the room, finish the engraving and start proof printing it. Copper plate engraving is 17th century intaglio printing technique. That means that the ink is rubbed within the engraved lines and the lowest areas of the plate are printed. Of course, the surface of the plate has to be wiped clean first, so the ink remains only in the lines. I prefer using newspaper for it, but a tarlatan or cheesecloth might be used. 
Now to the tricky bit. I mentioned at the start of the video that the technical idea is to combine intaglio print with the relief print. In previous works I have printed them on separate plates and then combined them. More on that you can see in the Starship engraving video. However, in this case it is printed from the same plate. To achieve this first I had to clean the lines of any remaining ink. In this area I already tried not to rub it in. But as you can see there's some ink that has gotten in. I also should explain what is relief print. You can think of it as the opposite of intaglio print. Instead of lines being black they are white and the ink is rolled on top of the plate. The highest areas of the plate are printed. The transparent plastic sheet cut into the necessary shape is secured to the plate. This is needed so that ink would be rolled only in this select area. The sides of the plate usually also catch some extra ink, so I wipe it off with a rag and turpentine. While I'm preparing the press for printing, I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon. Edward Cooper, Claude Goslin, Michael Quick, Benjamin Jemperlin, Willem Korn, Dalen O'Brien, Sarah Ayer, Edgar Stabax, Janis Latis and others. If you would like to support me, follow the process, receive the original prints, consider becoming a patron, link in the description. If you like this video, give it a like and uh, subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So finally, we are almost ready to pull a proof. Intaglio prints are printed on a thick cotton paper. Roughly an hour or so before printing, the sheets are placed to soak in a bath. Now it is time to take it out and blot it. Paper has to be damp but not wet, not soaking. You see these shiny wet marks, uh, the oil based ink wouldn't stick to those, wouldn't adhere to those. So a bit more blotting is required. Newspaper is actually excellent for this. It absorbs water very well and does not have any fluffs or little pieces that could stick to the intaglio paper. It's finally time. If you're curious, it takes around an hour to print a single piece. Ink the plate, clean the plate, roll on the ink, blot the paper, etc. I'm thinking of maybe recording an uncut process of printing a single piece. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. Even though the copper plate has been printed, there's still a little bit more to be done. As the paper is humid, it would bend and curl as it dries. So to prevent that, the paper is stretched to the board like a watercolor painting. As it dries, the paper shrinks and tensions resulting in an evenly smooth sheet. The plate has to be cleaned, a crucial step. If the ink remains in the lines and dries, it will be very hard to remove it from the plate. The plate would be ruined. A toothbrush is a perfect tool to get into all the nooks and crannies of the plate. Just don't mistake the toothbrushes when it's time to brush your teeth. And this is it. We have successfully printed a proof print. But, what is a proof print, you might ask? 
Proof prints are stages of engraving. They are prints to evaluate how the engraving has developed, whether there are any changes, mistakes, whether something needs to be fixed, etc. Proof prints are not part of the final edition. I examine the proof, see whether there's something, maybe a line that is missing, a spelling mistake, an area that needs to be darker. And of course, there's always something and back to engraving we go and engraving and printing and engraving and printing and so on and so on and on and on sometimes there might be as many as 30 proof prints till i get to the final result but once i finally reach that stage when i can look at the proof print and nothing seems too terribly wrong i can gladly call it finished I hope you have enjoyed the video, here is the final print. Also, big thanks go to Christopher Hochman, a meteorology student who was the scientific advisor for this project. If you would like to learn more about the project, please see the information in the video description. Thank you for watching.